there. And tonight in the Cult of the Cinema, we are talking about Vinegar Syndrome, a company near and dear to my heart. And no, I am not just the love child of Captain Haddock and, uh, and Tintin. I am a huge fan of Vinegar Syndrome. <laughs> if you're on my Twitter, then you uh, know that uh, my name there is Mr. Vincent. Love Vinegar Syndrome right now. Well, yesterday I talked about Scream Factory. If you didn't see that video, please check it out. <clears throat> if you did, share it around. Hey, Weldon, welcome. <clears throat> we are... See, with Vinegar Syndrome, it's kind of the company that's... They, they know me. Hey, Alan, they get me. <clears throat> and because of that, they put out a lot of movies that I really like. Now, i got to preface this right now. Uh, although I said on my video at the beginning, like, Hey, and ready? Welcome. Uh, not for kids. Uh, it's a Vinegar Syndrome. Not for kids. <clears throat> Just point that one out there. All right, right. Hey, Joseph. Uh, right away. So I will start with, I only got a couple DVDs. So we'll start with that. And then we'll go into the, uh, to the Blu-rays. I don't want to, without further ado, and now, I'm not sure exactly what's going to be on sale that we don't know yet. Hey, Jason, man, welcome. Um, but uh, it'll be interesting to see. And this way we'll, we can get through them all. Hey, Greg. And we'll find out there if, uh, if there's anything that you're kind of curious about. Feel free to stop me and ask me about it. We're going to be vinegar, vinegar syndrome centric tonight, so I'm going to be trying, like, answering mostly vinegar syndrome questions, unless like something like really big comes up. Uh, so now vinegar syndrome started out. Hey Steve, oh, I'm blind tonight. Hey Chris. <laughs> uh, so vinegar syndrome started out uh, kind of like with a uh, with the whole kind of like a GoFundMe thing to uh, to do like their uh, like the original releases. Uh, the original were known primarily a lot for their kind of like kind of like kind of uh, kind of eccentric off out of the out of the box releases and some adult material as well, <clears throat> which is another reason that we're not this is not a, a kid friendly video. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I don't have a lot of their adult material. I do have like a couple, uh, and we'll get into that. But they they kind of branched out. They became big with horror, and they uh, do a a monthly like uh, package. They also do like a, a yearly and, and and like half year package uh, as well if you got the bones to do that. I haven't so far, but uh, one of my dreams is to be able to do the vinegar syndrome package and uh, just like wait for it to come in. So I'll start with the DVDs first. Uh, that's where most of the adulty stuff is going to be. And then we'll get into the, uh, the non-adult stuff. Uh, like the uh, the Blu-rays and stuff like that. Now, the one good thing about Vinegar Syndrome is that even when you do have, like, adult-based DVDs and stuff like that. Oh, do, and ready, you're going to love the Ninja Box set. Hey, Brian, we're talking Vincent tonight. <clears throat> is that uh, they, they keep it pretty classy and they don't, like, have, like, usually keep any nude or anything in the box or anything like that. So I, I, I like that. Uh, <laughs> and they keep it kind of kind of cheesy and stuff. Now, uh, one of the first ones that I ever picked up was actually not an adult one, uh, but I guess that's kind of a, that would give an X rating. I don't really think this is an X rated film though. Uh, if it is, I really don't remember that part of it very much. And it's, it's the Cutthroats. Now, I got this on Blu-ray as well because they put it in their four films for uh, five films, five years package. <clears throat> I hope you like the Spookies, man. It's an ins incredibly insane movie. I'll get to it and I'll talk about the features on it as well because the features are worth it alone. <clears throat> they could have been that documentary on someone would have bought it. <laughs> Either one of them. Now, The Cutthroats is uh, directed by uh, by John Hayes. And if you don't know the director, John Hayes, he did Grave the Vampire, which is kind of a cult favorite with uh, with William Smith. I don't have any uh, Alice Wonderland one, but I do have like kind of like a, a cartoony one. That kind of helps out. But uh, we actually get... Uh, God, what's his name? I think uh, the guy from... Uh, he's killing me now. The guy that stars in uh, in Grave the Vampire, whose name my dad would like rhyme it off right now. He actually has a kind of a cameo in this, kind of as a favor to John Hayes. Uh, that's what out of print. Uh, that's the thing. Some of these go to print, so you got to keep an eye on the on the releases. They'll let you know if a movie's going out of print completely, or if it's just going out of print, as in like the slip cover is going away or a bonus disc is going away. But uh, keep an eye updated on that. They're really good about that. It's Vinegar Syndrome, Jesse, so you're in for this one. <clears throat> so next up is one that I got basically for the cartoon aspect of it because the movie itself was kind of weird, and that is Sex in the Comics. So this is a, a fun one. Basically, there are these kind of like um, eight-page kind of like comics done back in the day 
called Tijuana Bibles. That, that's the name of them. <laughs> I'm not making that up. And they would have like kind of just like kind of raunchy stuff. They, they were short and small and you get them in like uh, an adult shop and places like that. <clears throat> but what's really neat about this is there's two... Uh, oh no, not at all. Like <laughs> hey, Scott. Uh, there's two animation like things in here. And this is what makes it cool. If you're an animation fan, there are two like there's sex tunes in the funky world of adult cartoons. And basically it deals with adult animation. Super stoked about that part of it. That's what I really got this for. <clears throat> there, there is a weirdness to sex in the comics that makes it watchable. But, uh, oh yeah, there, not John, there is a vinegar syndrome sale coming up for, for Valentine's Day. They're doing a Valentine's Day weekend vinegar syndrome sale. So keep an eye out for that. I will let you guys know as soon as it comes on. But I want to come here right away and like tonight and just uh, go through the vinegar syndrome stuff. And uh, we'll do that. If you see anything here that kind of kind of piques your interest, let me know. <clears throat> I will stop. I'll talk about it. You know, next two are <laughs> from their adult line titles, and they're called Picaramas. So if you like the late 70s, early 80s adult cinema, then Vinegar Cinema was known for doing a lot of that. They did a lot of them on DVD as double features, and sometimes triple features, actually, called the Picarama series. Now, before the Picarama series, they did another series uh, that we'll get into as well. And for people that don't care about the adult stuff, don't worry. There, it, this isn't just adult stuff. It's just I want to get through the DVDs first, and then we'll get to the, to the really big stuff. So, first up is a um, two Bob Chin films, and the, those are Tropic of Desire and uh, Fantasy, uh, Fantasy World. I was going to say Fantasy Island. Does Vincent have any Russ Meyer? Actually, uh, yes. Uh, one of the very first movies that... Uh, releases that Vinegar Syndrome put out. Um, what did they have Russ Meyer? No, they don't. I was going to say, they've got lost films of Horace Gordon Lewis. That's what I was going to say. That I would be totally wrong. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, and that's not because of them. I'm sure they love to do Russ Meyer, and I would love to see them do Russ Meyer. Unfortunately, the estate of Russ Meyer, really not easy to work with. So, uh, yeah. <clears throat> that's why I got that arrow box back there. Next up is Baby Rosemary and Hot Lunch. Baby Rosemary is a classic. Uh, it's actually a really good film, and there's some trippy, weird scenes in it. Uh, I like... Ah, oh, Fanny Hill, I did forget that. So there was one. Jesse, thank you so much. But one of the classics, I'm not going to lie, I saw this when I was young. When I was way too young to have seen it, because I went to a video store and it wasn't in the adult section. And I guess maybe because Dracula was on it, they didn't realize it was a, it was an X-rated film. And uh, that is Dracula sucks. Uh, De Fanny Hill's definitely out there. I'm I totally forgot about them. <laughs> Bonus disc island. <laughs> <clears throat> this is fantastic. Jamie Gillis is the man. He does a great job. I like Jamie Gillis. He's a really good actor. Uh, and I'm not joking. I do think he's a good actor. Okay, this is not a doll at all. And none of, neither the rest of these here, I don't think. Uh, and that is Runaway Nightmare. This is insane. Have you seen this one? Guys, if you seen, haven't seen this one, definitely check this out. It is a strange, strange, strange movie. Now, it's uh, done, you know... Or to put it to you this way, I, I need to get Fanny Hill. I don't have that one yet, actually. Uli Lummel's in it, so they definitely got to get it. This is done by Mike Cartel, who is the, uh, well, director, writer, producer, editor, and star. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And if you saw Pets, then you know the type of stuff that Mike Cartel does. This is actually pretty wackier than, than Pets. Like, super different. Because uh, basically, it's about these two uh, worm farmers, if I remember correctly. Uh, that uh, get kidnapped by a cult of gun runners, and there's aliens, and there's like a sex cult, and it, it's it's insane. Definitely worth checking out. Hey, Pinga, welcome, man. Welcome back. Thanks for coming back. And you came back on Vinegar Syndrome Day, so any they're having a sale. Uh, uh, so you had a. There's another one that sold out from Vinegar Syndrome, <clears throat> and it's no longer in their. Uh, <clears throat> so if they ever want to, I like this movie, <laughs> and I say if they ever get it back, or they ever get like, say some extra copies, pick it up, it's actually fairly cheap. 
and that is lust for freedom. Uh, as far as I know, I don't think so. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be like a, a lot of adult titles uh, because of the fact that obviously it's a Valentine's Day sale. Uh, uh, that so that would make that would make sense. Oh, what was the same with Runway Nightmare? Get it. <laughs> it's my cartel, man. It's got dead pets, and it's more insane than pets. Uh, I uh, it, it's a fun movie. It is very hard to keep track of the movies. <laughs> I was like one of the last people to grab this one. I like I heard it was going into print, and I was, it was during the sale when I last year when I got like a, a lot. If you watch my last year's Halfway to Black Friday, Vinny Cernum Hall, I actually got like over twenty something Vinny Cernum titles. This was the last one I bought because I heard it was going into print from Stephanie Crawford, uh, from uh, from Screamcast, and I just did this. So if you uh, haven't, the recently the new Screamcast uh, episode podcast, I haven't done one in a long time, so. Make sure you check that out. Also, make sure you check out the latest Just to This and Pure Cinema podcast because they are freaking excellent. I still need to get Corruption Chris Miller and The Children. I got The Children, but I got like an old DVD release of it. Hey, William, welcome, man. It's whatever you like. For me, the one that won was the one that I liked, so I, I'm I'm good with that, but uh, to each their own. I haven't seen Four vs. Ferrari. Wait a minute. Yes, I did. That's the one with... Uh, Christian Bale, right? So this is this is one of my favorite driving collection. When I said there's there's another like double feature series that they did on DVD, this is it right here, <clears throat> and it is. It's got Death Force and Van Brokers, and both these are fantastic. They are by Sergio Santiago and Brian Kubrick over there. He knows I'm a huge ass fan. Of Sergio Santiago, I love his stuff. It, it is just crazy. Hey, Jr. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome sale coming up. And if you have not picked this up, definitely if it's on sale, uh, it's a really cool one. And uh, we had a blast watching both of these films. Death Force and the Vampire Hookers are hilarious. <clears throat> have one other one, and this one actually is an adult one. Uh, surprise, surprise. No, you just came in. I just got the DVDs. I haven't even gotten into the Blu-ray as yet. Because before there was a Peekorama, there was a drive-in collection, and they did have some adult films in the drive-in collection first. Did you really find a vampire? I, I find vampire is hilarious. Uh, I, I know it wasn't like the fastest moving movie, but that dude, like the cab driver guy, and, and just some of the sequences and John Carradine, I just, it had me rolling, man. <clears throat> I don't know if it's supposed to, but it did. Um, this is Vixens of Kung Fu in Orange and Blue. Yeah, they do, uh, uh, Brian. Some of their titles, like these here, they say the best that they could get them on was was DVD. Uh, some, like, the, uh, whether they didn't have the elements or they just thought that these may not sell as well to, uh, you know, to warrant a Blu-ray release. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure. But that's the, you know, that's the gist of it. They're basically trying to say, uh, let's start over with here from the beginning. Some of these here are out of print. I'll, I'll let you know when they are. And I'll let you know if there's other versions of it, if I can remember. If not, you guys can let other people know as well. So, first up is Crypt of the Living Dead. This one is out of print. Uh, this is one of the Exploitation TV editions. Uh, Exploitation TV was a short-lived streaming service by Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, they still sell the drive-in series, just Jason. Like, they still have the still have those there. I, I really love this one. This is actually two for this Crypt of the Living Dead and House of the Living Dead. There's two movies on it. It was, this is a Blu-ray DVD combo pack. This actually had sold out and they found a couple extra copies uh, in the in the warehouse when they were like doing a sale. So I snapped it up back in the day and uh, it's been long since out of print, but you can buy this one on uh, uh, on DVD if you uh, if you want to, because it's, it's a fun little film. It's got Andrew Prine in one of them and I'm a big Andrew Prine fan. <clears throat> oh no, they're very, like they're different films. I mean like, uh, one is like a god. It's been a long time since I've seen them, but I think one has to do with like a, like South Africa, and the other one is like uh, gotta remember different directors. Everything. Oh, I'm missing some comments. <clears throat> no, these are two different films. Uh, I'm pretty sure. 
Yep, I think they're two different films. Uh, Massage Par Parlor Murders, a great film. Uh, well, not a great film, uh, a fun film. What's really neat about it is you get to see, uh, you get to see like basically like Forty Second Street is what I want to go with. Like, like you want to get to see New York back in the in the day, but then it's kind of its heyday, and its whole like kind of you know grittier, sleaze infested type period. It is a really cool addition. Um, it does come with a booklet. Not a lot of Vinegar Syndrome titles come with booklets, but this one actually does. Uh, it has some really interesting stuff on in here. As well, they talk about the scanning and the restoration. There's a, there's a write-up on the film here as well. But I uh, definitely got to say, check it out. Mm. Next up is another one that's a double feature. A lot, of their, a lot of their early releases were kind of like you got to look, but some of them are actually double features, uh, including some of, their, some of the adult ones actually turned into double features as well. I don't have the one. My dad has it though that it, that it had a second film on it. <clears throat> this is the Doll Squad and Mission Kill Fast. And they're Ted V. Michaels films. You know Ted V. Michaels is. You know what type of movie you're getting. Um, think of like Charlie's Angels, but with like not as good acting, and and probably a bit more nudity, but but not a lot more. It's this this is not like this is not an overly like gigantically like nude nude film, but it's a it's a fun film. Fancy New York, exactly. Uh, I actually like these. I like these films a lot. Uh, me and my better have watched them together. Next up is an odd one. I'm not quite sure. The washing machine is over my shameless one, so it's probably region zero, but I'd have to check. All right, my dad had some beasts in Magic Sword. I thought they released released that one already. <clears throat> Yeah, I read your comment. I just can't remember, uh, Brian. <laughs> so that's one of the early ones I got. And you have no idea how many Vinegar Sims I've watched since then. Uh, Sugar Cookies. This one I watched more recently. Uh, it has Lynn Lowry and Mary Warnoff. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I am fans of both of these people. Uh, Mary Warnoff is a fantastic actress. Uh, she has great in this. Lynn Lowry does as well. I'm not quite sure the two people on the front are trying to remember, but they don't look like Lynn Laurie or Mary Warnoff. Uh, basically, it's another one of those uh, movies where uh, somebody comes in to like to apply for a movie role, that type of thing, and she looks like somebody else, kind of uh, that's that's dead. Uh, and they they go in a different way than I expected. They go in a really different way than I expected, and I actually I I like it. I got to give them kudos for that because. Uh, I didn't see all of it coming the way that did. Yeah, Mayor Warnoff did definitely stole the show. I'm usually a Lowry fan too. Like I've, uh, one of the big highlights for me was when I was on uh, I was on Instagram, and uh, she, she met she messaged me back on a, on like a, on a post that I put up about her. So that was super cool for me. <laughs> Next up is one that I think everybody kind of like has to get when they get into Vinegar Syndrome when they're going through Vinegar Syndrome and they're getting like their early releases. Uh, this tends to be one that people tend to uh, tend to go for. Uh, she's extremely talented, Lynn Lowry is. Uh, and that is Rob Force. It's just an insane film <coughs> that uh, most people kind of kind of love. I'll get to that one as well. <coughs> Unfortunately, I do know. Okay, <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, but uh, definitely, this is this is a really fun one. <clears throat> if you haven't seen it, it's got Cameron Mitchell, it's got zombies, it's got kung fu. But do it to be fair, the Burbank Kung Fu Club, uh, it's insane. And uh, not even joking here. Like this was done by like I think director Edward Murphy. So it's Edward Murphy's raw force. Uh, which, hope you get the joke. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I love the film though. Uh, I watched this more than I should have. Uh, but uh, it's it's a really fun film. Christmas Evil. That, that's what you just mentioned, and uh, I utterly like love Christmas Evil. This does not get enough credit. 
It's got Fiona Apple's Fiona Apple's dad in it as the as the main guy, as the as the killer. And this is probably and if you've seen it, you know why. But it, he's one of the great. I did, well, actually somebody got me the slipcover, uh, but uh, I guess they haven't had a chance to send it out yet, type thing. But somebody actually got me slipcover during the last sale. <laughs> and uh, I'm trying to remember who it was. Uh, but yeah, Christmas Evil. Uh, yeah, because this, this cover sucks. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I love Vinegar Syndrome. See this artwork? Does not represent the film in the slightest. Has nothing to do with the movie. And I truly hate the Christmas Evil one as well. Yeah, like, well, is there a verse artwork on this one? No, I don't think so. Because uh, this is one the earlier, no. Let's see, this is one the earlier releases. Yeah, the art does not fit at all, this film. Uh, if you've ever seen Christmas Eve, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Now, speaking about movies with great artwork, <coughs> and now, <coughs> and this one, I think, just for the artwork alone, guys, this belongs to everybody's collection. Nightmare Weekend. Also, it's insane. Uh, Nightmare Weekend is one of those movies that just has... It's like somebody's like cooking spaghetti. You know when you cook spaghetti? And uh, I hate the Injured <laughs> Man versus Evil Bong. Uh, I really, truly do. I, it was a really hard movie to get through. Um, uh, Nightmare Weekend was amazing. It was insane. There was a puppet that, uh, that, that does stuff, kills people. I don't know yet. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, they, uh, there's like a uh, Dale Medcalf. Yeah, Dale Medcalf from Pet Cemetery. You guys get Pet Cemetery. You've seen that movie, Screen Factory, the, the original one. Uh, so, Dale Medcalf is in this. How can you hate this, Jesse? When you know Dale Medcalf, the man, the guy from Pet Cemetery, is entertaining you in Nightmare Weekend. That should be enough. That should be it right there. You should be like, man, thank you, Dale Medcalf, for doing that. Extremely awkward sex scene in Nightmare Weekend. Because, man, it's really awkward. It's almost as awkward, if not more awkward, than the one in Mad Men in the hot tub. So, yeah. You've got to see Nightmare Weekend, guys. And, come on, admit it, Jesse. This is one of the great covers of all time. Even if you don't like the film. This is one of the great covers of all time. Speaking of covers that... I maybe i got to get some movie rewatch. People tell me i got to rewatch this movie because I rag on it a bit. Um, and, and I do, and I do like Alfredo, Alfredo Zacharakis. <laughs> uh, like, I love the bees. I think the bees is fantastic. Uh, but I never really got into Demonide. <clears throat> Not as far as I know. Severin's still waiting to release more kid stuff. I can't wait, Jay, to step for the Vinegar Syndrome package to go live in March to see exactly what it is. I hear conflicting reports. Some people say, Oh no, they pushed back both the boxes. Neither none's coming out till April. Then somebody else will come online and they'll say, No, no, they pushed forward the, one of the box sets. No one's coming out in March again. March is my birthday month. <clears throat> so, there guys, March is my birthday month. Remember that. <laughs> uh, Demonoid. Anybody see this one and like it, uh, let me know. Maybe I got to give this one another shot. I really didn't get into it when I watched it. Uh, but I watched it on the same night that I watched another movie, and I was end up going to the, uh, uh, g going to like their, uh, you know, going to get some tea a lot. It just I just didn't get into it. And here's the movie I watched it right next to. Um, yeah, they're pretty close, and, and that is Frightmare. Uh, Frightmare. Uh, Freddie Main is Freddie Main in this one. This one, Freddie Main. Yeah, Freddie Main is in this one. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Superman. Um, And this is, I love the cover. I, 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 I kind of watched the movie, but I don't know. Still trying to get into it. Maybe I, I got to give like Demonide and Frightmare another chance. I know that Demonide is one they did like a, a, like a, sp a special slip cover for. So definitely got to check that out. Next up is one that I like. Some people don't like this one, but I, I like it because the actor fully, truly commits I did, Jesse. I made a Scream Factory. I made two-parter. And that is Luther the Geek. So, why should you get this? Because the actor truly commits to playing the geek role. 
two, Stacey Hadiak, and three, Stacey Hadiak. Um, if you don't know who Stacey Hadiak is, well, she was April O'Neil in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, that's one thing she was in. She actually is a soap opera actress now. She used to act on Days of Our Lives, I think, uh, and like Young the Restless. I don't watch Young the Restless, but I think she was on that too. Um, but uh, Luther the Geek, really fun film. Shower it takes. Oh, man. I was so happy to find this film. Now, here is an Alfredo Zachar Zacharias film that I can really get into. I don't know if the, the I think horror cinema, that Hollywood Horror House and Extra 3, where they just came out, are, are too new to be part of the sale. And I don't think the, they're going to kind of fit with the Valentine's Day sale. I say we're going to get like a lot of the adult stuff. And so we're probably stuff like Luther the Geek, because it is kind of like a, a sock and slash. Well, she is the original April. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, because that's one place where I'm not a huge fan. Because uh, uh, I was joking about Michael Bay before, but the Turtles movies that he did, not too big on like the designs and stuff. But I love the original Turtles films. And she was in the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And then the second and third and something else took over. The sale, as far as I know, Rich, I think it starts on, uh, on February 14th. I got to look back on it, though. Uh, the Bees. This one is really cool. A uh, great cast, too. I mean, a really good cast. Because uh, you got Angel, Th Angel Tompkins, John Carradine, John Saxon's in this movie. John Saxon rocks in this movie. Was April O'Neil? Yep. She was April O'Neil. But then the role was taken over somebody else. <clears throat> Here's a movie that definitely should be on the Vinegar Syndrome, like Valentine's Day sale. <clears throat> and it is the classic. Did you like it? Because... I'm a real big fan of the bees. Actually, a bunch of I didn't just watch that one alone. Uh, yeah, I watched that one like with my dad and my kids and my better half and my cousin. There's a bunch of us watching. We all we all loved it. <coughs> it's a uh, it's not really like the birds. It's kind of different. <coughs> it's a uh, got a, kind of an environmental message way before there's environmental message being put in a lot of these films. But you know, the same as it would be in any like nature attacks type films. We got a lot of love for the bees here. Dolomite. Obviously, this movie here, you know, inspired a really great Netflix film, actually. My name is Dol That So if you've never seen the Rudy Ray Moore film, Dolomite, get on that because Rudy Ray Moore rocks, and this is a really freaking good film. Uh, and if you've seen the Netflix movie that Eddie Murphy did, you know you got to get yourself some actual Dolomite and, and see what the movie itself is. And what the movie is is utter gloriousness. So Dolomite, there's like a, this is the alternate artwork. I like the alternate artwork better than the uh, cover that they put on it. So I kept the alternate network there. Next up is one of the only uh, like uh, adult ones that I got for uh, in, on the Blu-ray section of it. Oh, uh, that the Dolomite release, and I will stop the dimension with Jesse's it. It's right. It looked not not a not the best. Uh, but the what they did to the Dolomite release, like but no, not their release, but like the previous release of Dolomite were kind of shady, kind of like Kathy's Curse, you know? But uh, what Vinegar Syndrome did for Dolomite is definitely eye-opening for that film. So if you've ever seen like a, a crappy release of it, definitely check it out. It's a really, really good film. <clears throat> oh, you, you would like uh, Superman. I know they're older and stuff, but there are a lot of really cool people behind those uh, Ninja Turtle movies. Uh, not, actually, not too low budget, actually. And uh, the people behind them are actually, unlike in the new one, Actually, there's some martial artists working in the in the in the uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. First two are the really good ones. Third one, not so much. Uh, <coughs> Trashy ladies, Ginger Lynn. I'm a huge Ginger Lynn fan. Uh, I grew up like I, when I was a kid in the '80s, so Ginger Lynn was one of the big actresses for the for adult cinema. Ginger Lynn and uh, Tracy Lords, but obviously Tracy Lords movies can't get those anymore for uh, the obvious reason. Um, look it up sometime, guys. It's a fascinating story. <laughs> but Ginger Lynn is incredible in this. This has actually got a good story to it. I got this one. Uh, there was a commentary on it as well. I won the commentary. Uh, Christy Canyon, of course. Uh, but uh, I love commentaries on these things because I really think it's a fascinating time in history uh, with uh, when they were making these films. I really, I strongly do. Nina Hartley. I love Nina Hartley. And I'll get to the other one they mentioned as well, of course, Cinema. Night Train and Terror was the very first Vinegar Syndrome title that I picked up. I was a huge fan of this movie. <clears throat> and this is another one that's that's a revelation. Uh, 
it looks amazing <laughs> on here. And not only that, but it's a Blu-ray DVD combo pack and it's got some, <laughs> is your that Chuck? I don't think he is actually. Oh uh, no, Ron Jeremy's not in this one. Though you get Harry, Harry Reams. So Harry Reams is really good. Uh, but for anybody that doesn't know adult cinema, Harry Reams was an actor that first acted in a movie called Deep Throat. Uh, is this, no, no, it's not at all like Terror Train. This is an anthology, Greg. Uh, Oh, she was younger than 17, actually, man. Uh, that's the reason that she actually started, she was around 15 years, 14, 15 years old. Uh, she, she lied about her age. Uh, and she did for a couple of years. Oh, that song will get, get in your head. <clears throat> Everybody's got something to do. Everybody but you. Night Train of Terror. I love this movie. What I love about this especially is the kind of the, one of the weaker features on it. It's just an odd film. It's a, like short. It's called Greta. And I wasn't quite sure about it, but when you see the actual full film, Greta, and there's just the actress in it, she's just really entrancing. Uh, to me, anyway. Um, there's something about her. She just has that kind of, like, factor. Uh, yeah, I forgot who's in Todd Good Night. I got that movie, actually. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, they have the full Greta on here, and it's worth seeing just for her alone. So definitely check out Night Train Terror. Really, really good release. One of the best early releases, and it got me into them. I have not seen Birds of Prey yet. I do want to see it. It's a, I'm a huge like Harley Quinn, Birds of Prey fan. So well, I'm not. I didn't like Suicide Squad, but I hear it's much better. And honestly, I can make a movie in my backyard still be better than Suicide Squad, and probably a better Joker as well. Uh, the Human Tornado, another Rudy Ray Moore, and this is the only actual sequel to Dolomite. Like there's other Rudy Ray Moore films, <coughs> and uh. But this is the, uh, but this is the one. This is like the actual sequel. The rest of them are like, <coughs> kind of like films, like with other characters. Loving it. I too like the Joker in the in, in the cartoon movie the best because Mark Hamill, he rocks it. <coughs> I'm a huge black exploitation fan. So is my better half. So this was something that we had to pick up, and it's it is a really cool one. It is a double feature: Candy Tangerine Man and Lady Coco. I actually like both of these films. Uh, the, I think they're Matt's Matt Simber. I think it's pretty much sure it's Matt Simber. Don't quote me, but I think it's Matt Simber that did these. Could be wrong. Oh, but it is Matt Simber. So Matt Simber is an interesting director. He's done a lot of different stuff, uh, but he's done like some definitely some really kind of cool uh, black exploitation ones. Uh, and uh, Candy Tangerine Man really stands out. If you've never seen it, it's, it's got a cool opening as well that uh, I won't spoil for you. <laughs> he's made some of those. I think he's, he's close enough. He's said enough for Rudy Ray Moore. Uh, next up was uh, Petey Wheatstraw, The Devil's Son-in-Law. And again, like this is not a sequel to Dolomite or anything like that. He's playing a character, Petey Wheatstraw, kind of like uh, a guy that like, he's got his kung fu action that but it's really cool it's a lot of fun there's a, this is more of a supernatural aspect one uh there's a lot of humor into it uh, definitely tongue-in-cheek and extremely fun like jason's right it's an extremely fun movie last up is rudy's message movie i'm not joking rudy made a message film and that is disco godfather so this is like the anti-drug you know don't do pcp film uh basically um Back in the uh, in the seventies and eighties, there was a lot of like comic books and movies and like special episodes of TV shows that uh, would talk about like uh, you know like PCP and basically a lot of them would end would would have like an, a sequence where a, one, there'd be a kid and he would do PCP and he'd either jump off a roof or jump out a window because he thinks he's a bird or something like that. Like not just one movie, like <laughs> like there's a bunch of them TV shows and movies. <coughs> Last few minutes are creepy. I love this Good Godfather. Uh, Definitely want to check out, guys. All the Reader and More ones, definitely worth having in your uh, collection. Uh, let me know what you think with Superman if you watch one of the original Teenage Ninja Turtles. Watch the first one because Eliza Kotes is uh, plays the character of uh, of Casey, and uh, he's badass in the movie. Looks like seventy Tales from the Hood in a way, I guess. Okay, the next one is one I love. I, I love this movie. I utterly adore this movie, and it is Evils of the Night. I got this one not because of the cover. 
I got it because I'm a huge Neville Brand fan. I've always been a big fan of Neville Brand, like Eaten Alive, so favorite horror movie of mine that not enough people talk about. Uh, notice there's a, there's a ship from a certain science fiction movie, not very well hidden, on the cover of this film. Who's going to point it out first? Because somebody always does. <laughs> So, we'll get Evil Town in a minute, Jesse. I know you're a huge Evil Town fan. But if you don't have this one, Jesse, definitely pick this one up, too. This is a really good film. Uh, and it's in the type of film that it is. So. Yeah, there are... Actually, there's two adult stars uh, in Evil of the Night. I think they're both adult. See, the one to do, like, a uh, a sequence. Kind of like a, a love scene, a nude sequence. <laughs> right on, William, that is. And uh, so they do have, like, a, kind of... It's almost put in there. Like, kind of afterwards. Uh, and, <laughs> right in that, I forgot he was in that. I got to rewatch that one. I got Disney+. Plus, <clears throat> But, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, so they put in, like, this sequence with, like, a nude scene with these two adult actors. <clears throat> Still, uh, damn good. Really liked it. Yeah, I think that's the reason. Eaten Alive is actually a really good movie. <clears throat> but because it was by the guy that made Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which one of the great movies, great horror movies of all time, <clears throat> I gotta do a Western one yet, Alan. Uh, like people tend to forget it, or tend to like think, well, it's not Texas Chainsaw Massacre. No, it couldn't be Texas. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two is a Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But still, Eaton Live is a really good film. With some great characters. Even as Marilyn Burns come back, working again with Toe Pooper. Toe Pooper. Toe Pooper. Toe Pooper. I'm gonna get that right. <coughs> Count. <laughs> Dracula's Great Love. Now, this is an excellent Panashi film. I'm a huge Panashi fan. He normally kind of was in the forte of like the of the werewolf. That was his big thing. But this actually is a really fun one. Uh, it's actually kind of a more romantic one. Move on, moves one on Blu-ray. That's actually something I've been wanting to do for a while at Rich. So you will be getting that. That's for sure. Just keep reminding me of these things, right? <coughs> Kevin Dracula's Great Love. Again, if you're a Paul Nashie fan, you got the Paul Nashie collections from like the, that came out from Screen Factory. You definitely, definitely pick this up. This is a really good release. And there is like a uh, a booklet on the inside as well. So I'll show you right here, this part of it. I won't show you the other side because the girl's like scantily clad. You know this is. <clears throat> Next up is one that they went out a stock on. I love Blackula. Blackula Allen has a Gordon Pinson. He's, he's a Newfoundland actor and uh, one of the best and a friend of my, of my late grandmother's actually. Uh, so uh, I'll always love Blackula. He plays the... Uh, Chief of Police in uh, New York with the Newfoundland accent. Uh, <laughs> Horror House on Highway 5. Love this movie. It's a Richard Casey film. I'm a huge Richard Casey fan. Uh, these are insane. <clears throat> this movie is nuts. It's all over the place. But it all kind of comes together in the end. And it has a whack doodle ending. <laughs> there's a killer in a Richard Nixon mask. There's Nazis. There, there's a rocket. There's all kinds of stuff. It just puts everything in there. And it's one of those movies that kind of shouldn't be like good, but it really, really is. See, I thought that Ken Jackson's Great Love, like that one does have more nudity and sex. There's one release that actually is cut. Necromantic movies. Uh, I got the second one. Uh, I had never bought the first. Uh, they were never like huge things for me, to be honest with you. Uh, I appreciate the way they were done, but uh, I never got into them, to be, honest, to be completely blunt. Hellbent. This is the second Richard Casey. And this was, again, both these <coughs> were limited edition. I do feel sad for them because it's a fun film. <clears throat> and this is a fun movie. He sold his soul for rock and roll. There's a few movies like that. But it's super, it's, but it's crazy, Ragman. Uh, to each his own, but I, I just love the crazy insanity at his whorehouses on Highway 5. It is crazy insane. But this, definitely check it. If you haven't seen this one, definitely check it out. Even people that didn't like Horror House and Highway 5 kind of like Hellman. So give that one a shot. <clears throat> Next up is Nightmare Sisters. It's a Lenny Quigley one. we got the Scream Queens in there. Lenny Quigley, Michelle Bauer, Brink Stevens, and a guy by the name of Dookie Flyswatter. I'm not joking. That's the dude's name in the movie. That's what he called himself. <clears throat> Either his family really hated him or, or basically said, you know, if I'm going to make a movie, I want to really make a, Make an impression. Dookie Flyswatter. That's the name for me. 
<coughs> I'm glad to see a lot of love there for Nightmare Sisters. It's a fun movie. It's a, it's a funny movie. It's, it doesn't take itself seriously. Obviously, it's a horror comedy. <coughs> uh, Brink Stevens in a in a good role. Brink Stevens, I think, she got her start. She early or an early role. <laughs> she, uh, did like a, did the uh, first Slumber Party Massacre. She's in that. She gets killed. Like one of the first people get killed in that. Hey, his name definitely is fitting for that. <clears throat> so, next up is a really fun one. And if you ever wanted to see the guy from from sleep from Slumber, I'm gonna get this straight. From Salt Night Daily Night Two, in a movie, I actually got Blood Diner, but I didn't know that Jay. <clears throat> the that's not Slumber, not Salt Night Daily Night Two. Want to see the star of that movie in another movie? Well, he's in this one. Uh, so this is Murder Weapon and Deadly Embrace. <clears throat> Both of these films are, uh, are are really fun. They were uh, done by, uh, what's his name again? Dave Dakota, right? Yeah, Dave Dakota. <clears throat> they both have Linnea Quigley in them. Uh, it's, and they have some good, a great cast too. You know, Lyle Wagner's one of these in a very cameo role. John Mike, Jan Michael Vincent's here. You get Karen Russell in this one here. Mindy Miller, Michelle Bauer, uh, Jack Carter. <clears throat> I really enjoyed this one. I didn't know that I was going to. Truly fell in love with these films. Uh, thought they were a hell of a lot of fun, and I definitely would recommend them to anybody if they asked me. Like, sh should I get them? Yes, they're some cool Lenny Quigley films. They're two very different films. One is one of those kind of like those kind of erotic, like sex exploitation kind of like those '90s, early 2000s Andrew Stevens style, and the other one is kind of like a kind of a slasher type of one. It's not porn. Don't worry. <coughs> the, uh, the murder, the murder weapon, and Daily Embrace isn't an adult film. Will I ever start a cult of cinema shop? I get asked that a lot, especially recently. I think one of the reasons is because I showed the cup that somebody sent me. <clears throat> and it's something I've actually thought about. I'm actually thinking of eventually down the road. I was asked to do a podcast with somebody before. And I'm still getting around to that. Um, so, uh, And I haven't got back to them in a while. Are you on here now? <clears throat> but I do want to uh, do something like that. And probably if I do that, then uh, I will eventually start up a... Uh, a merch store, just a small one at first, you know, t-shirt, mug type thing. See where it goes from there. <clears throat> Hobgoblins. I actually love this. It's Rick Sloan film. I'm a big Rick Sloan fan. Uh, it, it's don't go into this thinking it's gremlins or even ghoulies or, or critters or anything like that. Hobgoblins is definitely its own beast. It's an insane movie. It makes no sense a lot of the time. <clears throat> but you will enjoy yourself with this film. <clears throat> MST3K made this movie famous when the, with the version that they did. <coughs> and if you can't get through this, you know, MST3K did a version of it. But I, I really like this. Tired of Ghostbusters? I, I know about the oldness. I feel that. MC, let me know what you think, horror film, when you see it. It's, it's a crazy film. Next up is one that really kind of baffled me a bit when I first saw like trailing that for it. And the cover. So this is Death Machines. And Death Machines are these like these three guys are kind of like assassins. But it makes it seem like if you've seen the trailer in this cover here, like it's some kind of science fiction type of thing. It's not. Uh, but it's really fun. It's a really fun film. Uh, I enjoyed this. I enjoyed the hell out of this movie, actually. Uh, but I, I do like these kind of kind of full ones. You get a whole like dookie fly sweater. <clears throat> like a thing going here. I'm going to move these over a bit so I can actually sit down a bit more. There we go. <laughs> You're tired. Well, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm an old tired person, so yeah. <clears throat> this is a really good double feature, especially uh, Diane Thorne, the, who played Ilsa, unfortunately recently passed away. As in, like this weekend, um, she is actually one of the she actually one of the one of the main actresses in one of these films. I think it's Blood. No, it's, it's a Point and Terror. I think I'm pretty, pretty sure it's Point and Terror. <clears throat> yeah. So these are two Pete Carpenter films. I've I've championed both of these films on my channel a lot, and I've hoped hope that some of you guys actually <clears throat> picked up stuff. Yes, they do actually, and I'm glad you mentioned that, Rag Man. Both of these here. If you get the limited edition version of this, you're going to get a bonus DVD. There's alternate TV versions on both of these films. And I love that. So it's a three-disc edition. So you get the regular Blu-ray and DVD, and then you get the DVD 
the bonus DVD there with the limited edition TV versions of these films. Uh, <coughs> Pete Carpenter films are a lot of fun. Uh, Pete Carpenter obviously thought a lot of Pete Carpenter. You can tell that from his films. Um, but there's great cast. Uh, Marie de, de Aragon, de Aragora. I'm going to get the name wrong. I'm glad you liked him, man. Uh, because I really did enjoy these. And Point of Terror, I really, I really, really liked. Well, this one here is more of a limit. Like, <coughs> when they say limited editions, like, a lot of them says <coughs> limited edition with the uh, slipcover. Now, this one here was the limited edition because it had the TV version. It says out of stock. Oh, man. Uh, because the TV version was available. I'm guessing this will come, out, come back out again. But it probably won't, unless they find extra copies, it probably won't have the TV versions Included, so you'll have the two disc set. They're still really great movies to have, even if you don't have the TV version of them. <clears throat> took too long. That's a shame, man, because those are really fun, and it's a shame that it took that long to sell. Uh, the people, I guess, did, either they just know P. Carpenter was, or they just didn't get. It was a really great cover. <clears throat> They're really. It was a really fun double feature. Hopefully, it'll get some like some love down the road to put another P. Carpenter film, and it'll get a lot more love now that we we know what it is. And uh, Witch Trap, I was asked about this one. Yes, I have this one. <clears throat> Ryan Chadwick, 24-hour movie marathon. Doing it. Actually, I haven't. Uh, I know Ryan Chadwick is, but I don't know about the 24-hour movie marathon. That's something that, because of, well, work and stuff, I would not be able to do myself. <laughs> <clears throat> but Witch Trap, I really enjoy this. Uh, again, fun film by Kevin Tenney. Now, uh, Kevin Tenney is the guy that did like uh, you know, the demons. He did Witchboard, and if you saw those and like those, you're definitely gonna like Witchstrap. <clears throat> oh yeah, my God, that brings back stuff. So a lot of people like won't wonder which one is Rich Trap. They can't figure it out. So here's the original cover, the VHS cover for Witchstrap. You're bad man. <clears throat> and uh. There you go. If you, a lot of people remember which trap once they see that cover. Uh, they won't remember by the new artwork. I love the new artwork, though. Kevin Tenney movies I find really fun. And I don't, I don't think I've seen one that I, that I haven't liked. Next up is one that I can, <clears throat> I can proudly say that I introduced a lot of people to. And I haven't seen anybody that watched it and has told me they didn't like it after they saw it. <clears throat> that is Malibu High. Again, uh, this could very well be on the, the sale. <coughs> I wish Pinocchio was Avengers out. Now, Vinegar Syndrome like, came out uh, like in the Blu-ray era. Uh, no videotapes uh, for them. Unless they release like... Do I have Sam Neill's Merlin? I do not. But Malibu Eye, guys, if you don't have this one, if you missed this one so far... And I, I don't know how you missed it, but definitely get this one. It is not at all what it looks like. Exactly. Don't be fooled by the cover. It is nothing like the cover. <clears throat> but it's a really good movie. I talk about Roberta Finley a bit on, on when I do these ones. And they did a double feature, Roberta Finley double feature, which I thought was really fun. Any of the Vinegar Center double features, actually, you can't go wrong with them. And this is Primeval and Lurkers. Uh, some people actually prefer Lurkers more, but I'm actually more... Of a fan of Prime I do like them both, but I think I like Prime just a little bit more than uh, than Lurkers. But uh, definitely like a fun one. What's also fun is checking out this like cover and seeing how much it looks like another cover, which I'm not going to mention, but it kind of resembles another cover. But that has a commentary on Prime Evil from Roberta Finley. I say the soundtracks from both of these, <coughs> and uh, <coughs> utterly enjoy them. You guys have some great ideas. You guys got to start tweeting some of those ones you want. When you're starting to put out. Do I have Blood Theater? We'll get to that one, Chris. I may. But, you know, that means yes. <laughs> but, yeah. Woman's Torment is the best thing that, that... And you're in my mind. Because Woman's Torment is one of my favorite Vinegar Syndromes of all time. <laughs> it is utterly, for me, it's a masterpiece. It's a, it has both an X and R-rated version, depending on which one you want to watch. Because you don't have to watch an X-rated one. You can still get the movie, watch the R-rated one. It is. It's her classic, man. I love this film. It's her version of uh, Repulsion. Oh, 
Oh, thanks, baby. <coughs> I'm doing pretty good tonight. I'm, I'm enjoying the uh, vinegar syndrome stuff. I love vinegar syndrome. I, I talk passionately about them because I really do love their stuff. <coughs> so, oh, yeah, this is his version. Of, it's called A Woman's Torment. And hey, welcome, Warlock, man. Uh, a Woman's Torment is one. That and it, it is to me. It is like his version of repulsion. It's definitely uh, like that. Uh, let me know what you think. But I really thought it was good. <coughs> the actress, well, <coughs> oh wow, <coughs> went down the wrong uh, tube. So the actress in this uh, is is really unique and really odd. Uh, so odd that she literally one day just went out there. She was on the beach. She spoke to somebody like one of the I know a guy there, and she said, you know, we should go. And she just kind of walked off. A really stra really unusual. Um, but she's fascinating to watch. And she really helps make the film. <clears throat> now later on they had to do scenes where the only short from back on. It's for Britta Fanning the wig at this point. It's definitely, Jason, it's definitely worth seeing. Pick up. This was not at all what I thought it was going to be like. So I kind of remember this one. I had like a DVD version of this one. And I thought I'd watched it, but I'd watched another film. What did I say? It's Ghost Repulsion. Uh, I know you're gonna, you're not, you're not gonna think so. For me, it was, uh, but it, it just hit me in the right place. <clears throat> but I, I, I say you probably won't think so, but I did. I did think it was as good. Uh, the, like I'll give you my my honest like truth on that, and that's that's the truth. I, I really did like it that much. Some people won't, but you know it's me. Pickup, also known as Pazuzu, by the way. <clears throat> I'm not even joking. If you think I'm joking? Look at the in, the interior. The acting is it's. Remember, there's an adult film of it as well. It's a creepy clowns. Clowns kind of freak me out too. Does the art, in, it's our artwork? I don't think it would have sold as well with this artwork, but this here kind of like sold it. This was part of the Sexploitation series. <clears throat> it's it's different. I mean, you, you got to really see it. Uh, we really do need to see Woman's Torment to really understand. It, it's not something you can kind of explain. You can say it's like repulsion, and that type, like that's pretty much like the, the best way to describe it. And the actress has that kind of animatic quality, in much in the same way that the girl Greta does in uh, in the Night Train of Terror. She's just there's just something about her, <clears throat> and the fact that she like really did do a lot afterwards. And that like really kind of adds to the mystique of it. Ice cream man. Clint Howard, you know, this is one of Clint Howard's like seminal film up there with the Evil Speak. You know, those those are his two big films in my opinion, and I really really like both these. Oh no, Catherine Deneuve. No, no, I'm talking about. Uh, <clears throat> I love Catherine Deneuve. This is one of my my better favorite actors. I'm talking about Woman's Torment, the girl in Woman's Torment. Catherine Deneuve, I love man. <clears throat> now, Star Time. Uh, as Michael St. Gerard, who for me is better known as, as Elvis, basically played a young version of Elvis back in the day, even at a TV series. Oh, Ice Cream Man's fun. <clears throat> That's one of those became big when it came to, you know, uh, Joe Bob's show. Like, there's even like the Ice Cream Man release here literally has like uh, the, you know, the Monster Vision Summer School Edition on here. It says he said, David. I don't. I really need to get an end rate. I really need to get Liquid Sky. That's one that's been on my list for such a long time, and I hear such great things about it. And I haven't seen it for years. I'll be going in with brand new eyes. <clears throat> I wouldn't even be able to tell what Liquid Sky's about right now. <laughs> we are big Vinegar Center fans, yes. Yeah, it is a really good film. I want to, man, I want to meet Amaticon. I really do. Next up is another one that I think people kind of pass by a bit. And it's a shame because I think this is a really fun film. <clears throat> and it is Blue Vengeance. Uh, I had a lot of, I'm jealous of you, Joe, so I would love to have seen that in theater. Because it's one of those, like, it's a fun film. <laughs> well made in ways and like it's a low budget film it's got a lot of big actors in it like you know like the usual like Jamaica Vincent I mean uh, Olivia Hussey's in, in it you know uh, yeah it's, it's kind of a slasher uh, 
it's uh, basically this uh, guy goes out to kill like this. Uh, he, he goes insane. Goes to kill this band that he uh, that he really likes. There's actually a uh, a science fiction film. I haven't watched yet on here. Like as a bonus film. And I, uh, that's one of the things that kind of, there's an extra film on here I didn't even know about. And it's called uh, The First Man. It's a 1997 surreal science fiction movie from the, uh, from the co-writer of uh, Blue Vengeance. So I still haven't seen that. If anybody's seen it, uh, let me know what they thought of it because I'm, uh, I still got to get down to watching that. <coughs> Next up is definitely a classic, guys. <coughs> oh, God. I'm sorry about that. Shockwaves approved. Uh, Bloodhook. Gotta love this cover. Uh, Bloodhook is one of those nut, nutty, crazy films. It's If you're a Mystery Science Theater fan, it's done by Jim Mallon from Mystery Science Theater. Not joking, he actually did this film. Uh, it has some of the most insane uh, like lead characters in it. A guy that kind of like pretty much accuses everybody of like being the killer. But I really enjoy this. I love the cover. I really love the cover. <laughs> now the original cover of Bloodhook was really fun too. So I kind of wish I'd gotten the uh, this one it was had like a slip cover, but unfortunately I didn't. Blades will be a fun one. This is the original cover. As you can see, this one's very fun too. Bloodhook is a fun movie. It's actually a longer movie than I expected, because when I saw saw it, it was like cut to pieces. It may have been like seventy minutes. This one is like a hundred eleven minutes, which the version I saw was not at all. <clears throat> Maybe because they're getting ready for the sale, Warlock. Maybe because they're getting ready to make those announcements too. Next up is Wonder Women. Now I bought this at a uh, at a store, <clears throat> and I didn't have the slip cover. Uh, it was still, it was brand new, just sealed. But for some reason, the slip cover was was gone. Uh, and there there's Wonder Women. It's a uh, actually it's a fun film. I like it a lot. A lot of these, by the way, are are region free. Just so you know. Gemma yeah, Convincing Airwolf Man for the first three seasons anyway. Extra three is one I want to get to. I'm hoping I'll <clears throat> get it during their uh, halfway to Black Friday sale. Which I'm trying to remember when that is again now. It is definitely not Rick off Wonder Woman. <clears throat> that has literally nothing to do with it. Uh, but it's got like a, they're like a martial arts group, the Wonder Women. Next up is one. And I'm not going to lie, this is it is a lot of fun. <clears throat> this is not a movie that I'm going to say is underrated. It's rated pretty much about where it should be. May. Thank you. I've forgotten, you know. I actually said March. I, I got it totally mixed up when somebody asked me recently. <clears throat> and that is Cutting Class. Uh, Donovan Lech seals this movie by far and large. He's, he is the best part. It's got Joe Sholin and Brad Pitt. Don Lech is strongly the best part of this film. Uh, he was also really great in The Blob, too, for the role they did in that. So this guy here, he's also the kind of the boyfriend in The Blob. Uh, like, not the... Jill Sholin, <clears throat> it was sad when I re watched the features on this because she really, really... Touches End. Oh, man, that takes me... Yes, I've seen Touches End. I don't own it, though. <clears throat> she, uh, she really didn't like this film. She really didn't like doing this film at all. She didn't talk. She didn't have so much good to say about it. It made me kind of sad because I, <clears throat> I really love Joe Sholin and I. Uh, but I guess you know it's his experience on the film. Great cast. You got Ryan McDowell in here. Martin Mull's in this film as well. Uh, it's a weird, odd little film. I enjoy it, but uh, not a perfect film by no means. Now this next one. This one. I have my slipcover stuff's coming last. <coughs> is Bloody New Year. <coughs> now, Bloody New Year, this I love. I think he's alive, isn't he, Martin Mall? This, this is fun. Uh, yeah, this may be one of my favorite Norman J. Warren films. Uh, it really is. I went into this one with <clears throat> pretty low expectations. Uh, that being said, but uh, I just really enjoyed uh, this this film. I love this cover too, by the way. Of course, it's the classic cover that most people know it for. 
is this right here. This is the VHS cover. A lot of people have seen that. People hate Bloody New Year. Those people, shame on those people. <coughs> Bloody New Year is such a fun film. <coughs> yeah. Oh, sorry about that. There's nothing out there. This is fun. Uh, this is one that, if you follow my channel for a while, you know that oh, the artwork in that was fantastic. Uh, I've been championing this film to get a Blu-ray release, and then they announced the Blu-ray Blu release. So, of course, I had to have this. Uh, this is gorgeous. Not only that, it is stacked. The amount of features on here <clears throat> are insane. Just look. Just look at that there. That's all the features on this film. Death Precursor to Scream in more ways than one. And there is a great little short film on here uh, called Copycat, which you might want to watch after you see the film. <clears throat> and it'll tell you why some people here are saying uh, is, uh, is, you know, is a precursor to Scream. There's nothing out there. Really strongly recommend this one. Uh, great film. There's one sequence in it near the end uh, where... They're trying to get away from the creature, and it's such a meta film uh, that he grabs the boom mic and he swings across the room on the boom mic. I'm not joking. It's a scene, and there's nothing out there. If that doesn't make you want to see it, I don't know what does. It also has the great short film Mood Boobs, which co stars Tiffany Shepis. <clears throat> I know one person who watched it, uh, or read script at least, and not Kevin Williamson, but like a certain son of a certain director. Exactly. So the Uninvited. Again, here's one where I went in ah, thinking I'm not going to like that much. It's a Graydon Clark film. I'm usually, I usually love Graydon Clark stuff. Certain films I'm, I like better than others, but I adored this film. It is a, uh, I don't want to say it's a cat, killer cat. It's, it's, it's something else. It's different. It's weird. It's unique. And uh, you, you, you kind of got to see it. It's got it's got an amazing cast. You got Alex Cord, George Kennedy, Clue Gallagher, all in this film. Uh, and uh, just look at this. It bloody brilliant. And I do love the other cover as well. Just nuts. <clears throat> you can't go around Clue, man. Clue's one of those great character actors. <clears throat> then Warlock, you definitely should go and see that. And don't forget and say hi for me. Because I don't think they know I exist. <clears throat> and I'm definitely the biggest champion of Vinegar Syndrome, I would say, on YouTube. Uh, I think that's a fair assessment, right, guys? <clears throat> but they're just one of my favorite labels. They really are. Uh, Splatter University. I love this movie. I keep the alternate artwork on here. And uh, that is, a, you look close, that's Elizabeth Caton. Uh, Elizabeth Caton was, of course, in uh, Friday 13th Part 7, uh, as well as being in, like, uh, God, she was the girlfriend in Solid Night, Deadly Night 2 as well. And she's just in, she's the model for the cover of Splatter You. She's actually not in the film. But uh, she does show up later on in one of the other features that I'm going to talk about here. <laughs> did, did they like it? I hope they like the uninvited. And you do mean the cat uninvited, right? Not the old ghost movie. <clears throat> but I do like this one. They did put like a really cool cover on here that a lot of people love. Um, Warlock, I totally can understand. If you haven't watched my videos for a bit, I've been hobbling around. I've had like bad tendonitis. My, my leg sometimes kind of just <clears throat> doesn't move too well. <clears throat> People that have been watching my <clears throat> can't have seen me hobble across the room. So this is another Graydon Clark film. It's got a great cast. Like, a great, great cast. But uh, <clears throat> it took me a while. I don't get a chance to rest too much. I work a lot. Uh, <laughs> but I, when I can, I do. Uh, we've had some snow rec here recently. So I've done a lot of snow shoveling. Like, especially yesterday. It was, it was insane. I'm supposed to have another storm here tonight, so uh, I may have to, to do some shoveling again tonight. So this movie here. 
Now, this one is not for everybody. I, it took me a long time to get into it. <clears throat> but it's wacko. Uh, Cast-wise, uh, Jodan Baker, uh, Stella Stevens, George Kennedy, Charles Napier, Julia Duffy, Andrew Dice Clay. His first role, basically. <clears throat> Andrew Dice Clay, truly the best part of this film. I'm, I love George Kennedy in it, too. George Kennedy's good. And Jodan Baker. Just watch it. It's kind of fun. Yeah, you're getting the snow. I hate snow. I'm, I'm ready for Morocco right now. I hate the snow. <clears throat> okay. Here's one I haven't gotten around watching yet, so I'm going to be honest with you. But uh, I've seen one of these. I can't remember which one earlier on. That is Battle of the Planets and uh, what's it? War, Mutant War. So they, they go together. Uh, it's a double feature. <clears throat> I, I cannot agree with that, Jay. I love student bodies. It's one of my favorite films of all time. You know, uh, the you know, the long and another long armed guy like me is <laughs> in the film as a janitor <clears throat> and another character at the end if you watch it through. Uh, but actually, sci-fi, you know, inexpensive, low budget sci-fi. I'm always down for that. Next up is Dominique, or as many people know this one, Dominique. Is dead. Sure goes. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <sighs> I like to kill the kid that's got with the gum. <clears throat> well, Vinegar Syndrome 2028 shine, Vinegar Syndrome 2019. It is going to be hard to beat, but those box sets that are coming out, the Spanish whore and the, and the Forgotten Jallos, that's some pretty cool stuff there, man. This is really fun. It, it's a slower paced film, uh, it's definitely kind of more of a southern gothic horror. That's a bit of a thriller, and I really, really like that one. Actually, I haven't seen that one in a long time, so I don't remember. Jenny Agutter is great in this one. I love the way I, that auto corrected there, just like Jenny Agutter. But uh, yes, Jenny, I know, I know what it means. Jenny Agutter is actually great in this. We don't can. The Vinegar Syndrome titles are going to be announced during the uh, sale. So, uh, <laughs> it's very different, man. <clears throat> but Wack was very different. The Suckling, uh, again, uh, just a, a movie I never thought was going to get a Blu-ray release. A cool film. I think it's like Michael Gingold. Uh, is, the, is the alien? Is like the creature in one in the suit in one part of this? You know, from Fangoria. Uh, but there you go. It almost looks 3D with that cool last cover there. <laughs> Next up <clears throat> is one. I love that you say that. Uh, Dominique really, really stuck out to me too. And I don't think because it's, it is a slower paced one, it doesn't get the credit that it deserves. <laughs> this one is, is an X-rated film, but really X-rated very slightly. And in, in the fact that you could tell the director pretty much seemed forced to put an X-rating in, <laughs> but like a couple scenes in the film, because it really is a cool story to, to the film. And the, uh, the dialogue I, is, I really like. That is Flesh Pot on 42nd Street. So if you haven't seen this one, it is uh, directed by Andy Milligan. A lot of people either hate or love Andy Milligan, but I find a lot of his uh, his work when it comes to like uh, dialogue and the way that he, he portrays people, especially in Flesh Pot on 42nd Street, is very realistic, and I like that. I like when I'm watching a movie and a conversation sounds like a conversation and not like somebody wrote the conversation for somebody. Um, that's uh, something that I always get a big... Uh, uh, yeah, so it actually was shot on 42nd Street, so it was one of the big pluses <clears throat> for that one, <clears throat> which I think is going to be a plus for you. Um, but I, uh, I really enjoyed it. Next up is Grandmother's House. I recommend this one to a few people. Uh, I remember accepting Brian Sauer from Just a Dis, and I, I know he really liked it as well, so that's also like a, uh, a super kind of cool one. So if you like to visit movies like that, you're going to enjoy Grandmother's House. Next up is Norman J. Warren's Satan Slaves. So people either like this one or they don't, it seems to be. People seem to be kind of conflicted on Norman J. Warren. They either go in, they love the film, or they hate it. I missed out on the, on the, on the slipcover of that one, but I love uh, Flesh Pot on 42nd Street. And it's one that I, <clears throat> when we did the, uh, the, when I was lucky enough to guest host on uh, <clears throat> Just this, then, uh, I uh, I got to uh, talk about like a uh, flesh pot. Anybody wants me to guess so someone there? Anybody comes there that you got a podcast? You want me to guess so someone your podcast? 
That's something I would definitely look into. Because <clears throat> I love that stuff. I really enjoy it. Satan Slave. Anyway, love, love that one. Mountaintop Motel Massacre. It wasn't a favorite film of mine, but uh, it's one I, I kind of get into a bit more over time. Uh, none of the co I was like not big on any of the covers here. Like this cover's pretty cool. I actually kind of, this cover's a bit odd. And they actually had a, like a third slip, I think, if you bought it. Like, uh, like when it came out. Like an extra slip cover. Because people really didn't like the covers on them. Lust in the Dust. Love this film. I'm a huge fan of Divine. Uh, uh, fantastic movie. Got Lanny Kazane in this one. Tab Hunter. Jeffrey Lewis. Jeffrey Lewis. Henry Silva. Cesar Romero. Uh, how can you not love that? Try to buy low budget. Well, low budget. A lot of English certain stuff is low budget. But they have some great stuff. Low budget has a, has a charm. But you got to get the right ones. The ones that kind of speak to you. Oh no, they did make a mistake. That's those two factory cover inserts were done on purpose. See, <coughs> people got the got the, those actually put there's the different cover for you to check out in there. So you might want to open up, check it out. Next up is the classic. I love Blue Velvet, man. <laughs> I really do. Uh, Night Beast. This is by Don Dolier. Uh, my favorite Don Dolier film is still. Uh, the Fiend, I love The Fiend, but this is also really, really good. They actually had like replicas of the uh, of the spaceship that people could win during the sale. Did I double feature? I haven't double featured with Mandy. I still got to do that. Dude, I'm so behind on stuff right now. <clears throat> so let's do, uh, I'll just do these really quickly first, the box sets, then I'll get into the uh, slip covers because I know a lot of you guys are here for the slip covers that have stayed around. Uh, so first up is the Anvil Curse Collection box set. Uh, I, I cannot recommend this strongly enough. It is a great set. A lot of people like passed on it. You shouldn't have. It's fantastic. Uh, next up is the Angel Collection. And, and anybody that has watched this since I told them to pick it up have loved it. So don't forget to check those out. <coughs> and I'll really quickly do this. Jesse's going to be real happy now. <coughs> Because we're going to talk about, we're going to show these here. They have things called Vinegar Cinema Archives, VSAs. So far, there's four releases. Every one of them has a poster, a big 22 by 18 poster in there. <coughs> so, yeah, do, what would you put on for Valentine's? That'd be kind of cool, though. This is Savage Harbor, which is a lot of fun, and especially if you like avocados. Uh, there, there is, ready? I love Divine. Uh, do, I, I didn't see your comment before. I can understand that. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that part of it. But I, I, I really do like Divine. Divine's just an actress that, I, that had to do that role, but still. Uh, Evil Town. Jesse, there you go. Evil Town. Which one is that again? I mean, you can tell, tell me Angel Saints. Is that third one? That's the second one, is it? <coughs> and of course, Angel 2. Yeah, that's actually my least favorite of the three films. I, I enjoy it. It's got a great cast. Uh, but uh, I, uh, it was such an odd tonal change, wasn't it? From the other, from the other films. <coughs> like it's, it's like it was the wacky comedy territory all of a sudden. But I, I enjoyed all three of them. But the first one is still my favorite. Savage Don. They did sell out of Evil Town, I think. Uh, I think that was the first one they sold out of, to be honest with you. And of course, there is Vice Academy 1 to 3. Gotta recommend these. I'm a huge John Waters fan. Uh, John Waters, again, he's not for everybody. Uh, I totally get that. Some people don't get into his stuff. And I, I completely understand that. But uh, me personally, I'm a huge fan of John Waters, and I like his stuff. I'm with Stephanie on that one. Savage John is, is, is a cool one, dude. <clears throat> uh, you, you got a hell of a cast of Savage John. You got like uh, Lance Henriksen. Uh, it, you got uh, George Kennedy's down. No, Lenny Contain actually uh, uh, has a uh, has kind of like a cameo. Lenny Contain. What is Elizabeth Caton? Anyway, has a cameo in that one. So you're at the, we're at the slip covers now. <clears throat> so some of these came back. They were able to get some more of them. Uh, 
Are they similar to Miss 45? I wouldn't say they're similar to Miss 45. They're very different. Miss 45 is like about a, it's kind of a rape trauma film. Angel is an exploitation film that doesn't go heavy on the <clears throat> on the exploitation. Not with her anyway. Uh, but it's definitely a revenge film. Uh, there's a, the serial killer <coughs> in Angel. Uh, you'll find it when I'm talking when you watch the movie. Um, <coughs> there's a serial killer in Angel that, and I think anybody that's seen Angel was, uh, well, will be like uh, Wood Griffin this one, stands the test of time as a really, really good, really standout serial killer uh, in film. Right up there with the Buffalo Bill and all those guys, the serial killer in Angel is creepy. Uh, extremely creepy, and he does the job so well. He just does that job so well. He's almost entirely silent throughout the film, uh, speaking only one line, really, at the end of the film. Uh, Maybe he speaks more than that, but not a lot. It's just he it seems like this kind of this menacing character, and it works too. And he's played by John Dale, who would be you know go on to more fame, I guess, in like uh, Miami Vice because he's in that show as well. <coughs> I, I honestly, until the box set is sold out, I really don't want them to. I, I really, really like. I'm not joking. Uh, I really like the serial killer, in Angel. I think that he does a great job. Like he really, like plays it. Uh, uh, has anybody here seen Angel can kind of like back up or give their thoughts on that on, uh, on John Dahl's performance in, the, in Angel because he, he stands out yeah, he, he truly stands out like in a movie that's like so grounded and gritty because uh, Angel is a good film Angel isn't just like a, a good <laughs> like exploitation film it is a good film uh, nobody's up there I mean uh He's creepy. He's just as creepy as the, as the killer for me in Ten Minutes. Like, I'd forgotten. Like, I'd remembered Angel. I remember, like, Don, you know, Diane Franklin. I remembered, uh, no, sorry, Don Wilkes. Um, and I remember, like, uh, like Rory Cahoon and all that. But I'd forgotten, like, how, how kind of, like, creepy it is. Yeah, it is a well made quality film. I will definitely say that uh, Angel actually is, like, we go through a lot of the stuff, and a lot of the stuff is fun and cheesy and so good it's bad or just really kind of lost classics, that type of thing. Angel's definitely a lost, it is a well-made quality film. <clears throat> it's well writ written, it's extremely well acted. Uh, the killer is good, a very believable villain, uh, a very you know, a scary uh, villain. Uh, excellent, so movie man is too, like, did, did the killer stand out? Like he was almost like, man, why do we not, why have we not, heard people talking about this guy before uh, I will eventually do a good like solid review on Angel uh, the whole series the whole, and, and the set itself and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, because I want to get into it and like in, in more depth Undertaker Joe Spinell I love Joe Spinell of course Maniac because you know, it's a seminal film uh, but uh, I actually really dig this film if you've never seen it definitely give it a shot um, he, it's, he's at his sweatiest there I'll tell you that much uh, but he, Joe Spinell was one of those guys a, uh, a fant I haven't shown him yet, right, man? One of those fantastic actors that uh, just w will always, you know, character actors that will never get the credit that he truly deserves. But he's amazing. There's a reason that so many like big <coughs> actors and directors have him in their films. You know, he was in Godfather. He was in Rocky. Uh, <clears throat> people tend to forget Joe Spinell is actually a pretty big actor. Done, done some pretty big stuff. I like the movie. Matt agrees with me on that one. Okay. And cruising, yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so here we got Jack Frost, and being a five-year-old, I love this cover. <laughs> I do. I know. Come on, admit it. It's kind of fun. I must have did this for like five minutes when I originally got it. How sad is that? But I actually do enjoy this film. <clears throat> It's it's super cheesy and fun. Uh, it is what it is, <clears throat> but uh, I like it. We want to talk about like a really funny movie that was actually uh, actually kind of surprised me because <clears throat> I remember watching the original and I remember being eh, it was okay, uh, or as as as, uh, as Kubrick Love would say, it's meh. But uh, <clears throat> the sequel, <clears throat> the sequel is amazing. It's uh, so much better, uh, and. It, uh, it doesn't hurt that Adam Rifkin made the film, and that is Psycho Cop Returns. I know, you wouldn't think 
this would be a movie that would be like, man, I gotta, <clears throat> I gotta pick up that, <clears throat> sorry, sequel to Psycho Cop. But, uh, are you serious? Got fifty thousand dollars a costume? Yeah, <laughs> I agree. A lot of the money's getting pocketed, man. Love this film. Uh, I hadn't seen the sequel. I thought I had. Uh, when I got this one from Vinegar Syndrome, uh, I'd seen the original, which is okay and took stuff way too seriously. But Psycho Cop Returns, really fun film. Another classic is Sweet Sugar, Phyllis Davis. I'll always, I love Phyllis Davis. I uh, really like this film. It's one of those kind of like, uh, kind of like a women in prison film, uh, but kind of like done in like, you know, well, it's corrupt, like kind of like prison camps. Like, uh, if you saw Machete Maidens in the Unleashed, then you'll know what I'm talking about and like the type of film that it is. Uh, but I really enjoy this film. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. It's one of my favorite in the genre. Next up is another, you want to talk about a quality movie that got made. It got put in Vinegar Syndrome, and it took way too long for the slipcover edition to uh, to go uh, in this one, and because it has one of the best slipcovers Vinegar Syndrome ever did. It's not understated, but it's fantastic. And uh, the star of this movie is one is a girl you're gonna fall in love with. It's De Deborah Foreman in My Chauffeur. This is way freaking better than you would imagine, and I was really surprised that Vinegar Syndrome were able to get this one out there. Uh, although it didn't sell as fast as it should have, uh, so I don't think that we're going to get a lot of the modular types, and that's really, really a shame because this this is a really cool film, uh, and what a cast, man! We got Deborah Foreman in this one, Sam Jones from, from of course, you know, from Flash Gordon fame, and I guess Ted fame now. Howard Hessman is in this one, Penn Jillette, and you know, of course Teller. Um, you get Sean McClory, uh, E. J. Marshall's in this, uh, John O'Leary, Leland. Uh, Leland Crook, and uh, oh God, what's his name? Mm. But just an incredible cast, a great film. Yeah, the film, you just feel good coming out of that. Some movies, you like, if you're ever, ever, ever on a funk and you just want to watch a movie uh, that'll just make you happy, My Chauffeur will freaking make you happy. You want to see a movie that'll make you, like, scratch your head a bit, but you'll have fun with it? Ready for it? Demon Wind. W. Carey Pins in Cincinnati, yeah, and afterwards, man, head the head of the class. I truly, truly love this film. The, oh, man, how, Brian, how can you not? Hey, real welcome, man. How can you not love a movie that has kung fu magicians in it? Gotta love kung fu magicians. Just check this one out, guys. It's low budget, cheesy fun, and definitely want to check out. <laughs> really? I would find a way to make it, that get you to like it. Oh, oh no, Demon Wind is definitely not animated. <clears throat> there's so much fun to that film, and there's like there's an adult actress in it too for like one scene, uh, and a very and a cool scene too. Uh, very low budget, kind of like evil deadish kind of type, low budget type thing. Speaking of low budgets <clears throat> and movies that make no sense, but I, I just love this movie. <laughs> Orgy of the Dead. Do you like this one, guys? Do you like Orgy of the Dead? So Orgy of the Dead was directed by A.C. Stevens, written <clears throat> by Ed Wood. Not joking, Ed Wood wrote this, and starring Criswell. The psychic. <clears throat> he was then, of course, <clears throat> the narrator in a. Oh my God, it's gonna kill me there. In the movie uh, Planet Night from Outer Space, but Orgy of the Dead, Criswell gets to be in it more. Uh, what is Orgy of the Dead? It's a, it's a film. It's an insane film starring Criswell. Like really, he's like the guy, <clears throat> kind of like the guy from Hell type thing. He comes up, and on it, people are like. Uh, like people do like dances, kind of burlesque dances. Or my impression of the Oscars, every film and person that, that won for the first time in years were the were the people that deserved to win. Oh, there's basically no story. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> it, it's fun though. Like they got like some bad burlesque dancers in here, uh, a lot of strip teases and stuff. It, it's really crazy. 
But it's one of those you put on with, with some people and watch it. Like my better half doesn't watch a lot of those type films, but she watched that one. Uh, she, she thought it was hilarious. <clears throat> and Criswell keeps you going, man. Our dancing boobs in the graveyard. It's not wrong. <clears throat> Bloodbeat. Uh, you like Samurai Ghost? Well, here you go. Samurai Ghost. This is a Christmas movie. Here's a Christmas horror movie people tend to forget. Uh, yep, this one is set at, set at Christmas. And I enjoyed the hell out of this film. Way more than I thought I was going to. Because um, I, was, I wasn't sure. And this is like this is a French-U.S. co-production. <clears throat> uh, great, great cover, by the way. Uh, I think the, this one sought out the slipcover. But it definitely is a gorgeous slipcover. Now comes a classic film. What happens when you feel... Answers that question. The question that everybody wants to know. What happens when you feed <clears throat> human flesh to cats? Why the corpse grinder happens. That's what happens. This is hilarious. Uh, Ted V. Michaels. Not my favorite film. My favorite Ted V. Michaels film is still Astro Zombies. But this is a fun one. <clears throat> Cheesy. Nobody's ever going to, you know, say, well, Corpse Crimes, isn't that that classic film? No, nobody's going to say that. But uh, I enjoy it for this. Next up is one that uh, I found has been, like, kind of a bit divisive among some people. Some people love it. Some people, like, or, like really don't. <clears throat> but I'm one of the people that, like, really kind of, like, I was like, the acting's horrible in this movie. And by the time I got to the end of the film, I found myself legitimately creeped out by the ending. And that is a little movie called Disconnected. Now, do not go into this movie expecting a high budget or expecting, like, extremely quality acting. You're, you're not going to kind of get that. <clears throat> and, uh, but it's, uh, it creeped me out. It legitimately creeped me out. The ending just, just got to me. Like, and I didn't catch the, the problem without giving it to, in a way. I didn't catch the person that comes at the end and earlier in the film. Somebody told me about that. I had to go back and look at it. Uh, but it's still, it just, it just that ending, just it just got to me. Uh, and it seems so, and I'll say it, it seems so real. As in, I, you know, you, it's kind of stuff you can kind of see happening. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, Disconnected was a great film, a great little film. <laughs> and uh, there are some great features on it as well. The 20 Question short film is really, really good. Uh, I enjoyed that. I, there's a lot of really great features on it. It's a shame that Disconnected didn't get a standard edition release because I do think it's one of those that people are going to kind of discover down the road. Uh, but definitely, if you ever get a chance to check it out, check it out. Let me know what you think. Go in knowing it's low budget and it's not extremely well acted. I did. I really did like the 20-question short. I wasn't sure if I was going to, <clears throat> but I, I really, I kind of enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. I like to see an updated version of it, sort of. I would love to do something like that. It got me thinking. Next up is the Black Exploitation Classic Penitentiary. It has a gorgeous cover. It's a fantastic film with Leon Isaac Kendi. Uh, what comment is being held by review? I don't see anything. <laughs> but, uh... <clears throat> Oh, was it way back? I thought I hit that one. Uh, okay, cool. Okay, excellent. Uh, Penitentiary, again, love this movie. Love the sequels. I, I would love to see the third one come out on, on Blu-ray, but we haven't got it, so uh, sadly. How did this one not escape the other ones? Huh, what, what, what happened here? Anyway, a nun's collector's edition. Well, it's a collector's edition. It does that every once in a while. It'll, it'll, sometimes random words kind of like, all kind of like put things on like a, on like a you know, comment being held type thing. And I, if I miss it, I, I try and like hit it afterwards, unless you know, it's a troll. But hell's not a troll, so we know that. Uh, Future girls. Yeah, maybe something like that. Again, love the cover. Uh, AC Stevens. My bloody Valentine. My edition of that one doesn't arrive until Thursday. <clears throat> but uh, it was supposed to arrive today. Oh no, Alan's not a troll, so you're good. <laughs> but really like Future Girls. <clears throat> Fun film. Um, 
great, you know, cash. Renee Barnes in this one as well. You're lucky, Greg. I was supposed to get mine today. They told me I was going to get it. Then I get a message saying, by the way, your, uh, your movie's not coming now until a little bit later. <clears throat> also, fantastic. Penitentiary 2. It's crazy. It's insane. It's fun. It's got Mr. T. It's got Ernie Hudson. How can you not want this movie? You know you want this movie. Look at this cover. Look at this cover. A lot of people left the stream missing out on the good part. Hopefully they come back and watch it later. <clears throat> Pray. Uh, <laughs> Norman J. Warren, probably his most accomplished film. Um, really well done. Uh, great characterization in this one here. Yep, that's Ernie Hudson from the Ghostbusters fame. Uh, and of course Oz, the series Oz, who's big in that one as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's really good in Penitentiary too. He he's, takes over the role of the, of the villain. Uh, it was recast as Ernie Hudson. <clears throat> yeah, Rudy Ray Moore is in it as well. So you get like you get a lot of bang for your buck in that one. Definitely check out Pride. This is a really good film. I love the series Oz. Uh, I've watched it like several times, to be honest with you. The Terror. Again, it's this is another uh film by uh by Norma J. Warren. I like it. But it's probably my least favorite of the Norman J. Warren films, to be completely like honest with you. Uh, but it, it's a good film. It's a fun film. It said he said it was his version of Suspiria. I really don't see that. But uh, but I guess. Yeah. Next up is a, the classic one that kind of started all the black exploitation stuff. And that sweet sweetbacks badass song. It was done by uh, by Melvin Van Peebles, uh, with a disturbing cameo by his son at the beginning of the film uh, which you kind of got to see to believe uh, but it is like uh, it is kind of like a black exploitation mixed with mixed with with an art film and uh, it, it's really unique uh, they did like a uh, definitely definitely worth checking out great interview by the way uh, great interview with uh, with Melvin Van Peebles in here definitely check this out I, I love that doc. I don't have the docudrama, but I've seen it before. I, I need to get it. Mike Cartel's Pets. <clears throat> My better half absolutely adored it. Uh, and as you, if you read, if you watch the review, my better half is much better at like breaking down films in more of like an academic stance than I am. I I, I come from the heart, man. <laughs> but she actually she does a good job of breaking them down academically. But she is she is an academic. That's her thing. Thank you. Yeah, Pets. Pets is fun. Mike Car Mike Cartel. Kind of a, it's an odd film. I love this one. I've always enjoyed it, and uh, nothing's changed on that front. Oh, she doesn't have a channel. My better half would not have a channel. <clears throat> she's, I may be doing a podcast thing down the road, and she said she might do some of that for me, with me, but uh, she's not going to do her own channel. She comes in when I beg her to do some videos every once in a while. She usually comes in on some of the black exploitation ones, especially ones like Ganjan has her. Or sweet sweet back badass song where that she can kind of break down uh, and uh, she she enjoys doing that I take it from a film lover perspective and she takes it from an academic perspective and we kind of kind of split that split it down the middle deadly Daphne's revenge I enjoy this movie is it a good it's not a good movie but I enjoy it uh, I, I did tell people <laughs> before this movie came out this was not gonna be what they thought this is not gonna be a rape revenge type of film not in the way that they thought uh, this is not going to be like a uh, a super gory film or a slasher film, uh, but uh, it would be an interesting film. Am I feeling better? Slowly but surely, but my my leg, I think I don't think my leg's ever going to get back to itself again. Somebody asked me before in Blood Theater, of course I had to get this release. It's a Rick Sloan release. Uh, Mary Warnock sent this one. Oh, more than my voice, she, more than her voice. She's actually been in a couple of videos. <clears throat> uh, actually, she actually did a couple of videos. One of them were pretty tipsy for actually. Uh, there's actually a second film in this one here, and uh, God, the Visitants, which I actually really, I really enjoyed. Uh, so this is the Blood Theater one. I think that's turned around to Visitants. I didn't actually, but there's the Visitants. Uh, I think is the other cover on this one. Love the artwork on the Vincents. Uh, 
And I got to sit down and watch the Vincents all the way through. I've had people telling me the Vincents is actually a better film than Blood Theater. So we'll see. I, I'm a huge Mary Warnock fan, so that's a, that was like a big thing for me. And Rick Sloan movie. Like you guys see, I've got all the Rick Sloan movies that they put out. Like from Blood Theater to uh, to Hobgoblins to the to the Vice Academies. Because those are Rick Sloan as well, see? Uh, anyways, this is a fun one. Uh, I enjoy this one. There was some, like in all anthologies... I liked some better than others. And this is House of the Dead. It's it there's some sequences are better than others, but actually it's overall it's a fun film. I see the more the kind of thriller esque, kind of the classic you know, slow burn stuff. Dear Dead Delilah. You prefer you prefer Blood Theater? <clears throat> I don't know. I'm see I have to see them, but both to actually get it. I love the artwork on Dear Did a lot, actually. This is fantastic. Uh, House of the Dead, too. If that, you're talking about that one. Also, fantastic artwork. Uh, but I love this artwork here as well. It's just something classic and kind of classy about it. I haven't got a chance to watch that one since I got it. Uh, it's a... Uh, I want to see what some of the, one of the best slipcovers thing, Screen Factory ever put out and one of the coolest ones because it had that super kind of cool... I don't have the coda or the passing yet. Uh, I, I, will, I want them, but I don't have them yet. And that is Shot. Shot was a very low budget film, uh, which actually did a great job making it not look as low budget as it is. I utterly adore this cover. It gives me a kind of an R. Crumb type of feel to it. And uh, just a really do. It has an underground look to it. And being a guy that's been in, you know, like into like that type of stuff and punk and all that, I love the and underground comics. This has a cool underground feel to it. I just really love it. Next up is Death by Temptation. Uh, this is about James Bond III, right? Yeah, James Bond III put this one out. Yeah, it does have kind of a criterion look to it. It's a fun film, and I, I get why you hate for the character, actually. Uh, Death by Temptation. I enjoyed this film, actually. I didn't think I was going to. Yeah, I think Shot is one of those that, that hopefully will, will get a groundswell. Um, I try to like highlight movies that I don't think have, have sold as well, that I think are actually legitimately good. Um, because I think that's that's what you got to do. A lot of people just go in, and they have certain films that they get, and it, and they're the big films. Pretty deaf character, man. Kareem Harrison is in it, who is of course you know from a different world. I know my parents love me. Stand behind me, come with me. I'm not going to sing it. Trust me. Uh, Killing Kind, a good film, an actual good, really good film. Curtis Harrington did this one. Uh, really well done. Great cast. He's got the Night Tide. Night Tide. Uh, I actually recently got a. There's a Curtis Harrington film coming out that recently got a thing. Uh, we got like John Savage in this one. Uh, the girl from like uh, Laverne and Shirley is in it as well. I'm not joking. Uh, Cindy Williams is in it. Ruth Roman is in this one. Excuse me. I think who? The who is Tommy, is what you're thinking of. Uh, but I do love ACDC. <clears throat> my, I think this was on my first episode. No, Cindy Williams is in uh, Killing Kind. Blood Harvest. This was one that was I think talked about on the first episode of like uh, of Just the that I was on, and I love this movie. I, I really love this. Movie. I unabashedly adore this film. Oh, you can't mad this. You know my love for this, Brian. <clears throat> Look, come on, look at this. Look, how can you? Tiny Tim, it's Marvelous Mervo. And a girl that just can't stop getting chloroformed. What? Okay, good question. I have, I have both versions, by the way. I've got the 88 films one as well. Free Joker, uh, a better version. <laughs> uh, it is 185 ratio, it looks to be here. If this is correct on the outside, I don't think there's another ratio aspect for this one, is there? Uh, 
This one actually has a booklet with it as well. What did I miss out on? I don't think there's any controversy with this release here. <clears throat> actually, it was one of the more, one of the, I think it was one of the most popular releases. I don't have Trip with Teacher. I got to get that one. It's a fantastic film that I like a lot. <laughs> Debbie Downer. That's okay, man. That's the, you're being honest, and that's what I like. Incubus, one of my favorite Vinegar Syndrome releases that they ever put out. Right up there with the Women's Torment, Incubus is one of those that I think people need to see. Uh, not just because the, the film or that, but not just because, you know, the story, but because of what? It's got some de really good acting in it. It's got John, John Cassavetes. But there's some really good directing in this film. And there's some really neat kind of like camera work and camera angles in here as well. Some very different stuff and very kind of unique stuff that I really think should be seen. Yep, Baby Herman, they are having a Valentine's Day sale. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Ah, I wouldn't be surprised if 88 Films were a little vague. I'm, that that would not surprise me at all. Actually, because 88 Films, 88 Films, I'm pretty sure their uh, their edition uh, like went out of print really fast because of that. And uh, they, uh, uh, but luckily, uh, one of my viewers on here uh, was able to grab me a copy of the 88 Films uh, version of. Uh, Blood Harvest before it sold out. So I have both versions. Incubus is not a science fiction film, not really. It is like literally like a supernatural film, like it is an incubus. And uh, it's a mystery to who the incubus is, which is really cool. I thought that was well done. Uh, if you've ever read the book Incubus, you haven't seen the movie, it is different. Dark. I'm glad you see, Jesse. I'm glad you like them. <clears throat> I'll keep giving you hopefully good recommendations for Vinegar Center. Okay, here's one I really enjoy uh, that I don't think gets enough credit. That I think is actually a good film. It's a kind of exploitation film, uh, so it's not gonna be high budget. But I, I dug this one, and uh, I'm not sure if everybody will. But uh, it's a bit of a it's just a bit of a thriller and it's sudden fury. Uh, if anybody's seen it, shout it out. Uh, what, what your thoughts on it was. I actually really like this one. And uh, I'm actually going to go back to the well and watch this one with my better half because I watched it without her. But I think it's one that she's going to enjoy. So uh, kind of dug it. I love the slipcover for Sun Fury as well, but I uh, definitely want to go and check it again. Next up is a classic, On Mass Part 25. Uh, what did the voice come from? Uh, anyway, so I really dig this movie. It's super super fun uh it's not at all what a lot of people think it is uh gory yes uh but great you know i, I thought that's as really cool good acting and especially by the lead actor uh and the lead actress i thought she was really good as well the blind one uh there were some really laugh out loud sequences in the film <laughs> and uh it's kind of dark it's definitely a dark dark comedy but it, it is a comedy nonetheless and uh, people kind of got to know that going in uh if you've ever seen like the trailer before then uh or like basically basically in the early days they uh they promoted it in a way that really didn't suit the film but i, I thought it was fantastic next up was pink flies oh no <laughs> it's berserker I, I i did dig this one i dug this i dug the hell at berserker uh this was a fun film uh way 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 better than i expected this to be uh buck flowers in this one and uh i love buck flowers fantastic character actor but really well, i was a really big fan had a huge crush actually like like the viking berserkers and uh it it's neat uh beth toussaint's in this if you've ever heard the you may not know the name but if you if i told you to google beth toussaint and you saw her picture you'd probably recognize her right away whether you saw her in like one of her, her earlier films or star trek or something like that you've seen beth toussaint she's a gorgeous lady and she is in this film do I have pink flies as well? I actually don't. Uh, I really should get that. Uh, but this is a really fun film. Uh, it, it leaves it like kind of a, like you. It's a mystery to who exactly it is. Because they say they, there's Viking berserkers up there. And there's also bears. So is it a Viking berserker? Is it a bear? Is it something completely different? Am I trying to? No. <laughs> Only in hair. <laughs> Will I ever impersonate Patrick Stewart? Am I trying to impersonate? No. <laughs> Not at all. 
my God. Uh, yes, that's the next one, Jesse. Beyond the Door 3. Uh, I like this. I mean, the first time I watched it, I was that was pretty good. And I actually watched it again at, later. And I was like, you know, I'm really this is really growing on me. Uh, it, it's a fun film. It has some crazy twists and turns. Uh, Cast-wise, like, uh, man, I, yeah, most of Vincent's in this film. I'm a huge Bose Fenson fan. Uh, so that was, you know, there was a must for me right there. But Beyond the Door 3, if you have not checked out, it's a great cover. Uh, is the slip cover on this one gone yet, guys? I'm not quite sure. But uh, if it's not, pick it up. It's a, re it's a really cool one. Now we're going to get to one of the ones. Love the Impossible Nipples on slip. Yeah, that's true. Gotta love those Impossible Nipples. There are three, actually. None of them connect to one another. <laughs> that's the truth. None of them have anything to do with one another. Uh, there is Beyond the Door and uh, Beyond the Door 2, which I think is Shock or 2, right? Or is that Beyond the Door, which is Shock? Um, it's been a while. The way I did it, really? Uh, my voice is a little kind of off because that's why I'm drinking the tea there. So I apologize. <laughs> uh, Spookies, I love this movie. Uh, this is insane. Is it a good movie? Hell no. Is, is it a fun movie? Oh, my God. Yes, 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 this is a fun movie. Uh, but what makes this even better, if you don't have this, if you want, there are great features on this. The making of Spookies is a movie in and of itself. They could do a movie on the making of the movie of Spookies. Like, I mean, like a, like a live movie with, real, with actor stuff. I would totally watch it. The documentary on the making of Spookies is absolutely incredible. There is a, a really good over two hour long documentary uh, yeah, Arrow are putting in a big edition of Beyond there actually. Of uh, oh, I gotta get get Arrow. What's it called? Yeah, Vipco. If you're from England and you know Vipco, you know they put a lot of those uh, those video nasty releases. Uh, so Vipco was one of those companies that a lot of people over in England would definitely like. Kind of, if they loved the, the horror and loved video nasties, they would go to to get that type of stuff. And there's a, a really long documentary video Vipco here where it's really good and fascinating. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. Uh, maybe next time I actually try it, I actually got a good impression of it. Yeah. Unlimited two this edition. Grab this. Okay, yeah. Oh, definitely. Like I'm not joking, Brian. Like that is actually a really good one. And we get to the last, but not least, the last four ones. And I left these for last for a uh, for a reason because they're special. Uh, and if you can ever get your hands on them, I'd strongly recommend it. It gives you a good breath of what Vinegar Syndrome is. And Vinegar Syndrome is a company that does a lot of different stuff. Uh, they give the same care and love to a uh, 70s or 80s adult film that they would to one of their bigger releases, like their Amityville Curse Collection. And that just goes to show you just how much love that they have for cinema and for film. So what they did when they had their fifth year uh, of like uh, yeah, as a company they put out four like sets and what the sets were like were movies that were initially were only ever put out on DVD so they put like five movie sets and they uh, and they broke them up to uh, into like different categories and they were fantastic like for instance let's say you wanted to tr check out the erotica section the you know the adult cinema section but you know that's not something that you may want to have like displayed strongly in, in your in your library. I get that. Maybe you got kids or something like that, or maybe it's just like not something that you're in. But you wouldn't mind trying out and see like some of the ones with stories and that type of thing. Uh, and they did these five films five years, and they did one for like an action horror one. They did one for like uh, for erotica. So uh, this is the first volume right here. That uh, I think this one uh, is long in a print. Uh, but if you can find it, definitely grab it. It's definitely the best of the two when it comes to the erotic ones, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, definitely a good one for beginners. It's a two like Blu-ray set. The features are that you get five blue, five films on here. Uh, so don't go in like for the features. You, there's lots of movies, Vinegar Center movies you get for features. But this is a good way to see if they're if it's going to be your type of thing. The five movies on this one here are too naughty to say no, uh, which is really cool. Uh, actually, it's a really good one. It's got Ginger, Lynn, uh, Harry Reams is in that one, Bunny Blue. Hey, Steve, welcome, man. Uh, 
I actually really like that film. Bob Chan, anything Bob Chan, I really like too. Hot and Saucy Pizza Girls. Yeah, Jesse, that's my favorite on the set, actually. Oh, well, actually, one of my favorites, one of my two favorites. Uh, and that that's a really good one. Again, we got John Holmes now, the late John Holmes. Rabal Tales of Canterbury, Hapatia Lee. Uh, now, these are like straightforward, like they're five films. Uh, they came up for a really great price. Uh, like, they'd only ever been on DVD. They they upgraded them to Blu ray and basically said, you can get the, if you want features, you can go buy the cheap DVDs of them. But, uh, this is the way to get the films, the best get the films and see them, the best quality that they ever will be in. Yeah, like Eclipse Criterion. Think of it like that. Actually, that's, that's a really great example, uh, Cubic Lover. Uh, Prisoner of Paradise is on here as well. Again, it's another Bob Chin film. Seek is in that one. I'm a huge Seek fan. Uh, and Dixie Ray, Hollywood Star, which is actually a really good movie. It is a uh, kind of a film noir. Uh, and I'm not joking when I say it's actually a good movie. I actually consider Dixie Ray, Hollywood Star... A good film. There's actually a. It's directed by Anthony Smelly. Was actually a really good director for adult films. Uh, if this was actually cut into an R-rated version, I can't remember the name, but I'm sure somebody in here will say it. But uh, I think it's called That's Murder Baby. That may be the the name of the. Uh, but it's actually a, a good film, and it stands on its own with the adult stuff cut out of it. That's not in this edition. That's the adult edition. So next up is the uh, is horror and exploitation, and it starts out right away with with a film. That has my love, and it's Sirius Santiago, baby, and that is The Mothers uh, with Jane Kennedy. Uh, really, really like The Mothers. Uh, just a fun, fun uh, film. Flesh and Bullets, again, I got to agree. Carlos Tobolina uh, is does a great job with Flesh and Bullets. I really like that one. Uh, Hang Up is on here as well, another John Hayes one. I love anything John Hayes, guys. Uh, if you've got the Arrow video, like uh, uh, the uh, you know the American Horror Project Volume Two, it's got a John Hayes film in there as well. I totally missed that. I want to see what that was. The guy in Dictionary, the only one getting some of the whole film. I don't know. I don't think Cameron Mitchell even knew that the movie was X-rated. It was a candy samples movie where Bar from Works at a gas station? That sounds familiar. I don't remember though. Uh, I do apologize, Alan. But but if anybody knows it, let Alan know. Uh, Dungeon of Harrow's on here as well, directed by Pat Byatt. And uh, Murder on the Emerald Seas. I think that's Alan, Alan Ornsby's, if not his only directorial like film debut. Uh, he was going to direct uh, Popcorn. Cameron Mitchell. Not John Cameron, but Cameron Mitchell. Is in, uh, is in uh, Hollywood, uh, Dixie, Ray Hollywood star, an adult film. He doesn't do adult scenes, though. Of course. And of course, uh, Anne Orange was gonna was gonna direct the movie Popcorn, but he got fired off that set. And uh, as did the lead of the movie, and they recast it with Joe Sholin and got another director in there. But Anne Orange did direct this one. Anne Orange was known for a lot of work they did early with the early Bob Clark stuff and stuff like that. He he was like a, he was a writer as well. Next up is Volume Three, which is the second Golden Age erotic one. Uh, this one I think is out of print too. If you can get it, definitely grab this one. Uh, like you saw, you saw me there early on of watching that since the beginning. You know, Dracula Sucks was one of the DVDs that I got. Uh, I definitely wanted to grab this because Dracula Sucks on Blu ray, I really wanted that. Uh, also, Corporate Assets, which uh, is probably the most adulty film out of all these, uh, if you know what I mean. Um, like, most of these are like strong story wise. Like, a lot of these, like, early adult cinema was, was strong in story because he wanted to be able to take the adult parts out of the films and play them in, in regular theaters with R-rated versions of them. Uh, so they actually worked hard. It wasn't like nowadays where you can just put like a bunch of like scenes together or something like that. They actually worked really hard on them. Uh, so uh, yeah, I, but Corporate Assets is more of that, uh, the later type. Uh, the Vixens of Kung Fu, again, I got the DVD of this one. I was glad to upgrade this one. Uh, Tropica Desire, which again is Bob Chan, anything Bob Chan I'm in for. And Baby Rosemary, which is just John Hayes and is great. No, no. Bob Clark worked in Candlelot. Bob Clark is is American, uh, but like he worked in Candlelot because basically the idea was like we have a lot of like tax breaks for movies here, a, a ton of them, especially back in the day. So that's why he came over here to make movies like Black Christmas and stuff like that. So you you get a lot of like American directors that would come over to Canada and like do a lot of their films in Canada with with strongly mostly Canadian actors. And I can see why you think that because when a, Black Christmas is Exploitation. 
uh, like 100%. Like even though the director is American, he's, he's very Canadian in the way that he made it. He definitely was here enough to know Canada because Black Christmas is the most Canadian horror film I know except for Cannibal Girls. Definitely did, man. And we're all the better for it. A Woman's Torment. I actually mentioned that one on here. And I'm a huge fan of Woman's Torment. That's one I always champion on here. Movie Madness. I think we have very similar taste. So this is Volume 4. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my bloody Valentine's very Canadian. <clears throat> That's filmed here, by the way. I'm, I'm in Nova Scotia. So it's filmed right here, five minutes away from me. Um, and this is the second horror and exploitation one. It's got the insane film Cry Wilderness, which was used in the new relaunch Mystery Science Theater, by the way, <clears throat> with Jonah Ray. And it was their best episode of the first season. Uh, Vampire Hookers on Blu-ray. Sirius Santiago, baby. Gotta love him. Uh, you gotta love him, Jesse. Gotta love some Sirius Santiago. <clears throat> Evil Come, Evil Go is a fun one as well. Uh, the Cutthroats. Got it on Blu-ray here, too. Uh, so if you missed it on the, uh, on the DVD, uh, grab yourself the Blu-ray of it. <laughs> and teenage seductress which is actually sandra curry uh, so definitely worth checking out she's the sister of cherry curry from the runaways so there you go and that my friends is my entire vinegar syndrome <clears throat> collection which has been almost two hours long to uh to get through Screen Archives, Entertainment, or else I'm going to sell right now. I'll check it out. Warlock, I didn't know. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm sure there were some, Dave, that were kind of like, hey, did anybody order some pizza? But uh, yeah, a lot of them are really strong story wise and are really worth checking out. Um, adult films have a certain stigma about them that I think is unwarranted, especially for the early stuff. I'm a proponent of all types of cinema, including adult cinema. And uh, as long as, you know, people were, and especially like now, like people, it's, you know, there was always the stuff behind it and the stories and like the bad stuff that happened. Uh, and, you know, that happens on all types of films. <clears throat> um, but, uh, you know, drugs and all that type of stuff. Gotta say, I do, I, uh, I do like some of the early stuff. And I'm more into the history of adult cinema than I am that, but of course. Uh, I, uh, you know, I enjoy a good film. Anyway, with that being said, before my foot goes firmly into my mouth, I am Aaron. And I just love movies. This is my movie library. You guys, you guys have the call to cinema. <clears throat> and you got to admit it, it's a cool name. We're sticking with it. If I do a podcast, I'm going to use that as well. <clears throat> I will see you guys here next time. Same bat time, same bat channel. Let me know if you get anything from the vinegar syndrome sale. Make sure you let me know. <clears throat> and enjoy it. Enjoy your Valentine's Day. Hopefully you're going to enjoy it. Well, what part of the collection is next? I'll leave you to... Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I think I have an idea. But uh, we'll find out. Keep an eye out. Have a great evening there. For me right now, I'm not going to lie. It is time for tea.